BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events, with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live in-game betting props and futures. Head on over to BetOnline today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's BELIEVE50, B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's BetOnline.ag, BetOnline.ag. Keys to victory, LSU versus Alabama. What are the five things? We do this every single Thursday during game week. We give you five things. What are the five things that I think personally, and we'll ask you at the end of the show here, but what are the five things that you, things you got to do to beat Alabama this week? And quite honestly, make yourself into the college football playoff. Let's go with one number one. These are in no specific order. Never are, never, never will be. Just based off of like, hey, let's write these down. Let's talk about them. Five key points of what LSU needs to do. You can get to Milrow, man. Not just in the run game, but I think when he drops back to pass, you can get to him. I know that I talked about this a little bit this morning when we were over with our good friends over at Service Digital Media. You can go check out that show and podcast over on YouTube. But I look, I, everybody in their mom has come out here this week and said, you got to stop Jalen Milrow from running the football. Duh. Duh. Like, I, I mean, you know it. I know it. Everybody knows it based specifically off of you coming off the performance that you had against a and and Marcel Reed. That's like the big duh. So, yes, you're right. However, you're going to be in situations in this game where third and four and third and six and third and seven and Jalen Milrow is on the field for Alabama at quarterback, and you have to be able to get to him. Guys, they've already played eight games this year. And in two of them, Vandy, well, it's what Vandy did to close out the game and what Tennessee did to close out the game too, they got pressure on him during passing downs. Now, Wills Miro heard, was he banged up? I don't know, but regardless, he still is going to want to sit in the pocket and throw the football a little bit more than at least what he's shown this year than he has since last year. The right side of the Alabama offensive line is not good enough to contain what you do. They're not. Brain Swenson's got to be over there. I don't know what you're going to do in the interior. I don't know if JVR Suggs, especially on third down, if he is your best pass rusher in the interior, that he does not need to be out there trying to make plays off of a guy that can run. I look at Alabama's offensive line and the confusion that they've had against South Carolina who got to Jalen Milrow. I look at Vandy, who got to Jalen Milrow and forced a sack fumble that they recovered that ultimately won them the football game. Or I look at Tennessee, who, yeah, they do have a better defense, and especially front seven than you do. But, man, they did it all night long. Like a Cisco song saying, let me see that thong. I look at this game and I look at your front seven and say, look, it's a no duh, no brainer that if you are out of your gaps, if you're not sound correct, that we're going to talk about in a moment. But if you don't do those things in the run game, you're right. None of this matters. But here's the thought process that I have. I don't think you're going to stop Jalen Milrow from running the football on Saturday. I don't. What I do think you're going to be able to do, and I do think that you're going to have a plan in doing is containing him. Because even if Marcel Reed didn't happen two weeks ago, even if Lenore Sellers didn't happen two weeks ago, you were ready for Jackson Darted. Before you tell me Jackson Dart is not a great, uh, really good athlete, I would suggest you go much, w- watch more stuff from Jackson Dart and especially how fast and how explosive he was in moments running even on you about a month ago. I look at a guy like Braden Swenson and saying, hey, man, you have been a catalyst, especially after Harold Perkins went down. 
you have been the catalyst of what stirs this LSU's defense's drink. Bama's got an issue at right tackle, especially in the passing game. We'll get to number two, but it plays off of this. Guys, if your pass rush is there and you're able to contain Milrow and get to him, you're going to win this football game. I think that you they are going to allow pressures on Jalen Milrow and they are going to allow you to have the ability to get him down on the ground behind the line of scrimmage. The left side of their offensive line has been pretty solid. Now, in pass pro, they've had communication issues with Booker and Proctor. But the right side of the Alabama offensive line, especially with Pritchett at right tackle, has struggled. And I'm very interested to see if you go full Tennessee and go with some very different packages, maybe even earlier in the game. And no, I'm not talking about that little I formation BS. But you really get after Jalen Milrow. Guys, they've allowed 82 sacks. I mean, they're 82nd in the country in uh, sacks allowed. Excuse me. You can get to him, man. I I think it, be honest with you, I think the right tackle position in the pass game is their biggest weakness. It, it, it 1,000% outside of penalties, if you're talking player v. player, it's their biggest weakness. It's the chink in their armor. Man, if you, if you get to him at least two times, you're going to win. I, I feel fully confident in that. The second thing and the second key to victory that plays off of getting to Jalen Milrow is this. Guys, when Marcel Reed came into the football game two weeks ago, Not only were you not assignment correct, not only were you out of position to make plays, not only did you make bad tackles, not only did you get blown off the ball, but, man, you could not stop them on first and second down. They got to one-third down with Marcel Reed. One. By the way, on the third down, he ran his own read for a first down. With a guy like Milrow, man, you got to force him into these third and long situations. I I gave you this stat earlier in the week. I'm going to continue it here, okay? Alabama is 132nd in the country when they face a third and six plus. It's not good. It's not good at all. There's no other P4 team that struggles that when they're in down and distance, that they have issues converting third downs. So how do you get them in those situations? How do you put them in those situations? Well, you got to make Jalen Milrow a one-dimensional guy on third down. Major Burns, Greg Penn, um, Jordan Gilbert, whoever, name the upperclassmen. Name any of them. I mean, guys, at this at this point, Whit Weeks is, I mean, he's through almost his sophomore year. Guys, it's November, a fall semester in year two. You better be tackling on first downs and second downs, and you better be assignment, assignment sound. Because if you get him in third and short situations or third and manageable, guys, they're, they're seventh in the country in converting those. So it's the polar opposite. It's the complete polar opposite. You better be ready for anything, too. Because when I look at this team, meaning Bama, especially what Kalen DeBoer did last year at Washington, and even when Bama came out of a bye week earlier this year, guys, some of the things that they did and some things that they kind of ran out with in the opening drive It's stuff that they hadn't showed on film all year. Like, let me give an example. Coming out of a bye week earlier this year, Alabama in their first drive went under center with Jalen Milrow and ran a traditional old-school QB sweep. 
Then they did a wide receiver motion power counter run where they pulled two offensive linemen and Kendrick Lowe got the ball all on the same drive. They ran a fake screen. So not even on the first drive, you got to be ready for everything on first and second down. There is no game from a fundamental defensive standpoint that you have to be on lock than this week. You you got beaten in two others with a guy that can run. If you are not fundamentally sound this week and tackling efficiently on first and second down, you're not making a playoff and you're on your way to a cheese it bowl. I I will feel very confident if we are making Milro having to beat him beat us with his arm with his arm. I will. It's what Michigan did. Guys, think about all the losses. All of the losses that Alabama has incurred when Jalen Milrow is the quarterback, whether it be this year or last year. Texas, two years ago, contained Jalen Milrow and tackled well on first and second down. I look at Michigan last year having five sacks in the first half. Five sacks in the first half. I look at Vandy who got a strip sack to basically end the game. And then I look at Tennessee, where Jalen Milrow, because he's got a pass to come all the way back and tie Tennessee at the end, throws a pick because he's got to be one-dimensional. There are teams that have made him one-dimensional. Schemes have made him one-dimensional. Vandy. Vandy. Now, I know that Alabama scored... 35 points, but they also had two turnovers and made a critical third down stop twice in the second half to beat Alabama. Then Tennessee. When they were literally met, let him do nothing in the running game in the second half. He, Gus, he maybe, maybe of the 25, 30 yards he had, he maybe of net rush yardage. Maybe 10 of that came in the second half. I know that people want to talk about Ryan Williams, and Ryan Williams can beat you. He can. Jalen Milrow can throw the deep ball. But I got to be real with you. If Jalen Milrow is going to go out there and beat you with his arm consistently, and I mean consistently, I'm going to take that over him running all over him. You can't have you cannot let this be a replay of last year. It cannot be. Do something different. I do think if you send all out heat on Milro, he can he I'm not saying that he can't process quick enough, but over the last couple of weeks, something has drastically went been off South Carolina, Tennessee. Shit, even Missouri in the first half, too. I, I I didn't watch the second half of the Mizzou game as much as I wanted to because they just kept turning the ball over, meaning Mizzou, over and over and over again. They threw three picks in the second half. It's just like, I mean, they're starting to drive at their own 40-yard line. Guys, it was basically Alabama, basically in the second half, Texas a m you, or Missouri. It's the same kind of second half. You were on the receiving end. Missouri was on the receiving end on what basically happened in the same ordeal. I think Zy Alexander this week is going to be, and I talked about this on um, on Wednesday, when we talk, or Tuesday, excuse me, when we did do's and don'ts. You got to, and we talked about it with Carter. I think it was the lead thing that we talked about with Carter. You got to be physical with Ryan Williams. I am going to allow mentally I'll be okay with, and I think you should too, that if Milrow beats you with his arm and Ryan Williams goes off, fine. But I saw Tennessee break him. He was broken. So guys, physical corners like Zy Alexander have got to be big this week. All right, number three. Guys, you can't turn the ball over. Going to continue to say it every week. Going to say it every week. So you have... A situation where, look, let me just say this before I say anything. 
else. I don't really know who we are as a team. I, I, I really don't. Because I feel like every time that we've been in these big game situations, the defense has had to overcome multiple big things and multiple big obstacles that the offense has laid right in their lap that they have mostly, for what it's worth, overcome. I I, I, I just don't know that if you I, – I, well, let me back up. I do know somewhat of what you look like. I saw a preface of it during Arkansas of what it looks like, even though Nuss had two interceptions that were dropped. I know what you can be. I know what you can be. Because you are a playoff talented team. Whether you make it there or not, it's up to you. You are a playoff caliber team. You should be there. You know it and I know it. Guys, if you keep turning the ball over, you're not going to be there. You cannot continue as a team to remain in the category of being one of the teams that has three turnovers per game in the SEC, the other being Georgia. I feel like Georgia, who has had to overcome this three times this year, and they fell once against Bama. If you give Bama that many possessions and you freely give Jalen Milrow the football, we are going to lose. I know that we are very jolly and happy that they already have two losses going into November. I, I get it. We're not Bama fans. I get it. Nobody likes Bama. I get it. It doesn't stop the talent that they have on their team. It just doesn't. And if you do that to a team like them, they will beat you because they're good enough up front on both lines of scrimmage to lean on you. They, ironically, have more depth than you do. Especially in the interior of the defensive line. I need us to play. We need us to play clean football. If he, if he plays cleaner football, cleaner, not clean, cleaner football, you're going to a playoff. I, I I can't I can't keep bringing this up, man. I mean, I, maybe I'm the only one. I let me tell you how I feel. Maybe you think I'm overreacting, so maybe you can say I am or I'm not. But this is how I feel because I read all of your comments. I feel like when I come out here every Thursday and say we got to stop turning the ball over, I get a massive pushback. Well, Blake, it's this. It, 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 it it's the run game's fault. It's Joe Sloan's fault. It's the O-line's fault. It's this person's fault. It's that person's fault. The number one thing of an offense is to not turn the ball over. That's your only goal. If you go three and out, then go three and out. But what you cannot have happen is freely gift the football back to the other team. You know, when two weeks ago, when Marcel Reed and you could not stop the, stop him and the defense was just like, yeah, man, we can't do anything. We need the offense to pick us up. And they didn't. I felt like, do you remember in the movie The Waterboy when Bobby Boucher caught an interception and he threw it to the offensive lineman and the offensive lineman scored and they and and, and uh, 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 the Mud Dogs lost their opening game and Bobby Boucher like drop kicked the guy in the end zone? That's how I felt like watching the game on Saturday, what would be like as a real fan. Like, that's how I feel like it would it went down. You freely give to them the football, and they just drove it right down the field and scored. And you're like, we're really going to lose the game because of this. I don't know if it's the, the worst half of – the only – here's what I'd say. Outside of the Tennessee game, that was the worst half of football LSU has ever played. At AM. And in the back of your mind, you're constantly thinking, 
Well, man, we we could allow that again. And you certainly could. And you could certainly continue to repeat who you are. It might be just, as a team, what your DNA is. But this is the last time. This is the last time for me. Because we have done this for eight straight weeks. Where every single week we have talked about not turning the ball over. Go listen to any key to victory throughout the year. And it just has not changed. And when it has, it's been very rarely. I can't even give Arkansas that because you almost turned the ball over there. Now, why I feel like I'm on an island is because it feels like that people think I hate Garrett. I don't. This is what happened. Don't know if y'all saw this today on social media. For whatever reason, this morning, there was a dispute that broke out in reference to Jaden Daniels. Okay, stay with me. Some fan was tagging all the media members and tagged me and said, Blake Rafino was the one that wanted Jaden Daniels bench. No, y'all think that I hate Garrett because of whatever reason, because I said that Garrett Nussmeyer wasn't ready above Jaden Daniels. Who was right and who was wrong? Go back and listen to any 22 show. But I don't know if Nuss is ready right now. I think he is in some instances. In some instances, like the last part of the Ole Miss game, I'm just like, that is elite shit. There's no way to characterize it other than it being elite. Then I see media members, and me and Carter debated this after Ole Miss. It's like, oh, Blake, I mean, we won. We won. I mean, he threw a couple picks. Okay. No, it was always going to beat you. You're going to continue to lose if you turn the ball over. You're not Georgia. Georgia's an anomaly. You're not Georgia. Sorry, you're not. They have been able to overcome it. It's the last time I'm talking about it, man. I just can't do it anymore. It will be in your DNA. And you're going to have to just then now start an accounting for. And maybe a lot of you have. You know, this is a... Thought, just a thought that popped in my mind. Maybe a lot of you have already uh, equated in your mind. Thumbs up or thumbs down about what, I, about what I'm going to say. Do you already feel like most of you, yes, to the, put, put a thumbs up to this. Thumbs up to you've already equated in your mind that you're going to have turnovers and throwing interceptions. I'm not there yet. I have not been there yet because Arkansas happens. Now, thumbs down if you believe that like, oh, no, Blake, we got to talk about turnovers. I'm, I'm going to be assuming that a lot of people are going to put their thumbs up and say to themselves, yeah, we just equated it. We just figured that he's going to turn the ball over. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt on some of these things. I do. Because this is it. Like after this, like after this week, like after this week, if he, if guys, if you go nine and three, eight and four, seven and five, I mean, at this point, you're all going to the same place. You're going to a bowl game. Going to a cheese it bowl doesn't matter to me. I, I mean, it really doesn't. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop covering the team. Doesn't mean that I'm going to stop loving LSU. Doesn't mean any of that. But you and I both know that you. If I would have told you at the beginning of the season, hey, you got to beat Florida, Vandy, and Oklahoma to make a playoff, you would say, bro, that's uh, oh, um, shit. We're going to a playoff. Guys, I mean, you're here. Well, Black Vandy's better than what we told in the beginning of the year. You're supposed to beat Vandy. Sorry. Either it stops now or it's never going to stop this year. I've seen all season, a whole nother season can stop it, but it's not going to stop this year. It's always going to be there. All right. Last but not least, um, or excuse me, number four, your running game. I think that you're going to be creative this week. I do think that you're going to go out of some pistol stuff if the – I hope that you go after out of the pistol this week and get your running game going. I, 
I've just, you know, kind of heard some things. I think that's going to happen. Um, if it doesn't happen, then I don't know why they haven't been working. On, I mean, why they wouldn't call it when they've actually been practicing on it this week. You got to get Caden Durham outside the tackles. And why we continue to run inside zone is beyond me. Why we continue to run zone read is beyond me. Counter in the inside is beyond me. Guys, Caden Durham has more runs of 10 yards plus when he hits outside the tackles than anybody on the team. It's where majority of his big plays are coming from or even more decent plays are coming from. You got to get him to the outside. You got to find ways to get him to the edge because once he gets there, he's going to burn some people. I think you got to be creative in getting four yards. Guys, this game's a tough foot. It's a tough game. It's a brutal game. And even though it's tough and brutal, there are going to be times where you need to line up and run the ball for three yards. A game inside a game. That, you know what, if I, you know what, if I run the ball for four yards on first down, I line it back up and I do it one more time then I'll line up and do it one more time. Then we start throwing the ball around a little bit more. It's going to lean on them in the fourth quarter. It's going to work on that defensive line in the fourth quarter. Tick, 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 tick. Because there's nothing wrong with lining up and punching somebody in the mouth for three yards. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. We're getting like, oh, we ran for three yards. That play didn't work. Okay, line it up and do it again. You line up and go, you're going to be in the same thing. If you throw an incompletion, I mean, guys, in these three ranked games, you're below. In these three ranked matchups, or in the, I shouldn't say ranked because South Carolina is technically not ranked, but against Ole Miss, A&M, and against... um. How about this? In these in the two high profile games that Garrett Nussmeyer has been has played in, his completion percentage is below 50%. So if you're gonna miss 25 passes, let's say you take half of that in 12 runs for three yards, that's more productive than throwing it as much as you're doing it. Sorry, it is. Every game you've been able to line up and run for three yards. The sack yard, it's kind of hurt it at the end. But, hey, what do I know? Um, Josh Williams, Caleb Jackson have got to be big, man. It, they they got to be big. Uh, we need Caleb – we need the flashes that we've seen from Caleb Jackson. We need him to finally appear. Because, guys, I'm going to tell you something. Watch any all-22 company. There are holes there. They're tight windows. They're very tight windows. Holes are there. How about this this week? Don't put Tradez Green on a defensive end that's going to be drafted in the top 15 picks. Now, Bama doesn't have a guy like that, but let's stop putting Tradez Green on the end line of scrimmage. Find some, either put Bo Borderline's big ass out there in 12 personnel. Or d don't put trade as green. Excuse me. Don't put trade as green. You're going to go 12 personnel? Line it up and bust their ass. By the way, in preseason, now y'all do know this because I shared it on Twitter, sh shared the videos on Twitter of uh, us being at practice, whatever. All right. Guys, Literally, all offseason, LSU worked in 12 personnel, meaning two tight ends, one on the end line of scrimmage and one right behind him, to the side of him. They went under center multiple times this spring at 12 personnel. They haven't done it once this year. Not once. I am begging you, begging you to do it. Then why were you doing it all offseason and now you're not running it? Why? the base install of our offense. Bullshit.
that you wasted time. It's a time waster. Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson got to be big this week, man. And if their offensive line cannot hold up and it's not on them, then so be it. But we need Josh Williams to put his head down and, and represent what he's been as a player. You know, guys, here's what I'm going to say. If I'm Josh Williams, Josh Williams can win you this football game. Josh Williams, 1,000%, could 100% could be the reason you win this football game. If he does what he replicated in 2022, you're going to win this football game. We need him to do it. We need him to be that person. When Will Anderson's in the hole and you have a critical third and seven and Josh Williams is truck sticking him and picking up the first down, we need that Josh Williams. We need that Caleb Jackson. Where's the toughness? Go get him. All right. This is last but not least here. I do think that you could overwhelm their secondary. There, I said it. I look at the teams and games that they played. Guys, Tennessee is not good at throwing the football. They're not, they're not better than you. They're not. I look at South Carolina. Well, we know about South Carolina. They can't throw the ball either. The only team that remotely had a pulse, like kind of like you, was Georgia. They threw for 337 yards in the second half. 337 and a half. Against Alabama. Turnovers did get it put into that with Carson Beck. I don't think their secondary is that good. A lot of that's got to do to scheme. They are getting better. Malachi Moore is really good. Jackson is really good. But they are going to do one thing. One thing. They are going to run two-man high. And they're going to play man-to-man coverage. And I think that you can overwhelm them. Guys, Chris had two go routes last week. They were shit. Let's call it what it is. He looked really crisp on that hitch route. He looked really crisp on that dig route. C.J. Daniels per Brian Kelly is probable. Kyron Lacey, Aaron Anderson, Mason Taylor. I think you can, guys, I promise you, I feel... Statistically, nothing would suggest that you can overwhelm them. The scheme and the film tell me differently. you got to make right decisions in the passing game. There are going to be guys wide-ass open. Because I fully believe, based off the stuff that you've called and the air raid principle stuff that you've called, Aaron Anderson can have a field day. Guys, they could not against Tennessee. They could not against Missouri stop a slant pattern to save their lives because they're playing man-to-man coverage and they're playing off man-to-man coverage. Why Mizzou got away from throwing slants at a religious pace, even with Drew Pond, is beyond me. But Tennessee and Nico E. Malava ain't their ass up no pause. You got to be be Arkansas. Arkansas. Do Arkansas. Play like you did against Arkansas. If they're going to play off, slant and hitch their ass to death. Be in the first half. Be 16 of 20 for 200 yards for all I give a flying shit. People don't want to nickel and dime. They're going to give you... The only reason why they wouldn't would be would be because that they want m- to make us make quick decisions and play press, and they think that that's what you're going to do. Then you're going to have to connect on some deeper patterns. I get that. Nothing that they have run this year. Tennessee, go look, go watch that. Um, Georgia, go watch that. 
They are going to play off coverage, but they're going to be in man. You got to light their ass up when they are giving you that much yardage. Because you can. Dude, I'm telling you, I, 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 guys, I promise to God, if there is one key to victory, if there is one key to victory that I believe in more than anything else, is that if they play off on you, you better nickel and dime their asses to death. You better Arkansas them. Arkansas them all the way down the godforsaken field. Wait, how many losses did guys in the chat? Do me a favor. Can can y'all tell me how many losses does Bama have? Put in the chat right now. Is it one or two? Put in the chat. One or two losses. Huh. Well, y'all are saying two. Huh. The two games that they lost, what did they do in the passing game? Huh. So, wait, what did Vandy do in the passing game with Diego, Diego Pavia? What did they do? Oh. Huh. Diego Pavia threw 12 passes. In the first half, 10 yards or shorter? Huh. Wait, Diego Pavi threw how many in the second half? 10 yards or shorter? Oh, 17. Oh, wait, that might be 12 again. That might be my bad handwriting. I need to work. I need to make sure my handwriting's better. You get the point. Huh. What about Tennessee? Now, I know that that's 15 in the second half. Oh, three in the first half. Well, I wonder what happened in that game. Oh, that's right. Tennessee came back in the second half and won after not scoring a first half point because they want to play off coverage. Hmm. It's interesting, isn't it? Guys, I'm telling you, as God is my witness, they have not changed shit all year. Now, there are some plays, there are some instances, there are going to be some situations. They will mix some things on you very rarely to try to confuse you. I get that. I 100% I understand that. They are going to be in man coverage 85% of the game. 